dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O God, oh God, through your through Son, your you son, have bestowed, you have bestowed upon, upon your people the brightness, the brightness of your light. Of your light. Sanctify, Sanctify this new this fire, fire and grant and that in this Paschal feast we may so burn, burn with, with heavenly desires, desires that with that pure, pure minds we may attain, attain to the festival of everlasting, of everlasting light, light through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 The light of Christ, praise be to
Rejoice now, heavenly host and choirs of angels, and let your trump... Sorry. Hit me a note again, please. Rejoice now, heavenly host and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation. For the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor. For the darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty, for the grace to sing thy worthy praise of his great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and good always and everywhere with our whole heart and mind and voice to praise you, the invisible, almighty, and eternal God, and your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who at the feast of the Passover paid for us the debt of Adam's sin, and by his blood delivered your faithful people. This is the night when you brought our fathers, our mothers, the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt, and led them through the Red Sea on dry land. This is the night when all who believe in Christ are delivered from the gloom of sin, and are restored to grace and holiness of life. This is the night when Christ broke the bonds of death and hell, and rose victorious from the grave. Ah, ah, wonderful and beyond all knowing, O God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a slave you gave a son. Ah, 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 ah holy it is this night, when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away. It restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn. It cast out pride and hatred and brings peace and concord. How ah, blessed is this night when earth and heaven are joined and man is reconciled to God. Holy Father, accept our evening sacrifice and offering of this candle in your honor. May it shine continually to drive away all darkness. May Christ, the morning star who knows no setting, find it ever burning. We who gives his light to all creation and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how God's people were saved in ages past. Let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. heavens and the earth 
the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was good. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which would the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. And in the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful 
and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the, every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Let us pray. O 
O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Flood from Genesis. <clears throat> the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And every living thing that I have made, I will blot out from the face of the ground. <clears throat> and Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. And the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great, of the great deep, burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth, forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham, and Japheth and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind and all domestic animals of every kind and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth <clears throat> and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark, ark with Noah two and two of all flesh, in which there were, was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, <clears throat> and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued, forty days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark <clears throat> that he had made and sent, sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove above him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him anymore. In the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. 
So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies the sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we who are saved through water and the spirit may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Israel's deliverance at the Red Sea, a reading from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, 
Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone so that we can serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning, watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down on the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the dry, that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea.
Let us pray. O oh God, whose wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Valley of Dry Bones, a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet, 
a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. 
Grant that those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit, the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Christ. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that those who hear are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who made the dawn of this new day to shine with glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in serenity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Seated. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Please join me in reading the psalm found in your bulletin. Alleluia. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, the people of straight speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel God's dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O oh, Jordan, that you turn back, you mountains that you skip like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O oh earth, at the presence of God, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory 
When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they, had, they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Savior. In the name of God, the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to you all. As we gather on this holiest of mornings, our hearts are filled with anticipation and joy as we celebrate the Easter Vigil. This vigil is a time of profound significance in the Christian calendar, for it marks the culmination of our Lenten journey and the triumphant resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But in the darkness of this morning, we are reminded of the darkness that once shrouded the world when Jesus lay in the tomb. It was a darkness of despair and of doubt and of death. So our hearts are heavy with the memory of Christ's passion. In the gospel passage we've just heard, we are transported to that dawn of the first Easter where Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome make their way to the tomb. Their hearts are heavy with grief and burdened by the weight of loss and shattered hope. They had witnessed the crucifixion, the brutal death of their beloved teacher and friend. Their journey to the tomb is one of duty, to anoint the body of Jesus. But little did they know they were about to encounter the greatest miracle of all time. As they, approach the to as they approach the tomb, they are confronted by an unexpected sight. The stone which they had worried about had already been rolled away. And upon entering, they are greeted not by the lifeless body of Jesus, but by a young man clothed in white, a messenger from heaven. His words pierce through their confusion and fear. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they had lain him. Imagine the shock, the disbelief, and the overwhelming joy that must have flooded their hearts at that moment. The darkness of the tomb is shattered by the radiant light of resurrection. Death has been conquered. The chains of sin and despair have been broken. Jesus, the crucified one, is now the risen Lord. Yet, Mark's gospel doesn't conclude with jubilant celebrations or triumphant proclamations. Instead, we are left with a seemingly abrupt ending. The women flee from the tomb, trembling and bewildered. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. 
Now, this ending may leave us puzzled, even unsatisfied, but perhaps it is a profound invitation, an invitation for each one of us to complete the story with our own lives. For just as the women were commissioned to go and tell the disciples the good news of the resurrection, so too are we to be called, so too are we called to be bearers of this great message. The Easter Vigil is a journey from darkness to light, from death to life. It is a journey that mirrors our own spiritual journey as we strive to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Like the women who came to the tomb that first Easter morning, we too are filled with wonder and amazement at the empty tomb and the message of an angel. He is not here. He is risen. In our world today, marked by darkness and despair, the light of Easter shines as brightly as ever. It is a light that beckons us to embrace, the f to embrace hope in the face of hopelessness, to choose love over hatred, and to, to seek reconciliation in a fractured world. The resurrection is not merely an event of the past. It is a present reality that transforms our lives and empowers us to be agents of change in our own communities. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. It's the foundation upon which everything else rests. Without the resurrection, our faith would be in vain and our hope would be empty. But because Christ is risen, we have hope, hope that transcends the darkness of this world and points us towards the light of eternal life. As we celebrate the resurrection light, let us also reflect on the significance of this event in our own lives. Just as Jesus emerged from the tomb, so too are we called to emerge from the tombs of, tombs of sin, doubt, and despair. We are called to embrace a new life that Christ offers us, a life filled with love, joy, and peace. May this Easter vigil be a time of renewal and rebirth for each one of us. May we leave behind the darkness of the past and step into the light of Christ's resurrection. Let us allow the story of the resurrection to take root in our hearts. And may we go forth from this place with the same sense of awe and wonder as the women of the tomb, ready to share with boldness and joy the power of God's love, proclaiming to all the world Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. People. God of love, we rejoice with angels and all the hosts of heaven as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son. Bless today's joyful celebration and turn our hearts to you with new delight and commitment. We praise you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. God of mercy, bring your church to new life. Awaken in us a faithfulness that manifests itself in joy, in dedication to work of reconciliation in the world, in care for your creation, in awe of your glory. We, we praise you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. God of wholeness, bring those who suffer to new life. We pray for those who bear the burden of pain and anxiety whose relationships are shattered, 
whose lives are full of despair. Lead us to find ways to be present with them and reflect your love for them. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of light, bring those in authority to new life in the ways they lead their nations. Show them the path of integrity and truth, that their people may live in peace, that all may have plenty. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. God of eternity, we give thanks to those who have gone before us and have entered into new and everlasting life in your presence. We praise you, Almighty God. Alleluia. Amen. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week. Alex, Diego, Avery, Vicki, Neva, and Walden. And for those on our parish prayer list, Bruce, Mike, Terry, Susan, James, Sophie, Margaret, Sherry, Sandy, Peggy, John, Lee, Bill, Paul, Larry, Nelson, John, Francis Joe, Kate, John, Taylor, Carrie, John, Barbara, Dennis, and St. Mark's School in Haiti. You may offer your intercessions and thanksgiving silently or loud. Please help to find healing hands for Gregory Neal and support and love and grace for his father, William Neal, as he helps his son. Thanksgiving for the day of resurrection. Hear our prayers on behalf of those for whom we pray and give us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen and exalted Lord, Amen. Amen. Today is a fifth Sunday, and so on the fifth Sunday, we offer the ministry of healing. So you are invited to come forward for anointing with holy oil, laying on of hands, our prayer and prayer.
The peace of Christ be always with you. I'm so happy we all could gather here this day, this beautiful day, the weather is perfect. And even if it were not perfect, we can always rejoice in the resurrection. Come rain or come shine, it doesn't stop Jesus from raising from the dead. I have a long thank you here, and I hope that you'll read it, but just deep appreciation for it. This is so many people that do a lot of work Self tirelessly dedicating their time to beautify the space. A lot of it's behind the scenes and unseen. So just to thank you and also to thank you for being here because if all of that were done and that we're the pandemic and we look out in the empty chairs, well, and everything is live stream, uh, we are thankful for those who can join us live stream. There are a few announcements I'd like to bring to your attention. The artist stations of the cross are still on display in the meeting room, so stop by. There's a booklet there for you to look at and go through and enjoy the creativity that was born. Four years are back. I believe there should be a sign up uh, to participate in four years. And I will leave the remaining uh, for you to read on your own, read and respond accordingly. As always, your gifts of time, talent, and money are welcome. And may you have a, remember that Easter is a season, it's 50 days. So rejoice every day, 50 days, start a new habit, and then it just continues on. So walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By Christ's death, he has destroyed death. And by light, by Christ rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be for your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Christ, through whom we are, be accept we are made acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Christ, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As your Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us in this hope that we have grasped, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children, through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, 
who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage, brought us out of bondage to sin into true and at lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.
Um, quick question for you. Um, it's 